show you guys this new hair that I got from elvahairwigs.com. So it came in this super cute box that I have ripped open because I was excited. Um, yeah, so it comes like this and you open it up, take the little thingy off, and then it's like this super cute box. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, and it's super cute. I love the packaging. So we're just gonna open it up, open her up, like so. So this is the wig that I'll be showing you guys in a second. And it comes with this little card that shows you more wigs they have available on their site. I thought that was super cute. Um, it also comes with this weaving cap. Um, I don't use these for my wigs, but I will definitely probably use this later on for like a sew-in or something. And a little card with all the girls who've uh, featured their wigs on their YouTube. I am super excited to try this hair out and to be honest, I'm picky. Uh, I've been wearing luxury extensions like uh, bundle hair. I started off with Indian hair, then I moved to Mongolian, Chinese, Cambodian. Peruvi, like I've tried it all, so I'm really, really picky. You guys know that. So if I like it, you're gonna love it. And this is what the wig looks like straight out of the bag. Let me let me get into it. I pick benders for wigs based off of how the hairlines come. I don't want it to be completely plucks just because I like to make my own customizations. My hairline is a bit different from everybody else's, so I like to have a bit of wiggle room. But at the same time, I don't want it to come as a helmet because it's going to add literally like an extra hour to customization that I don't have. Especially um, if I'm trying to customize for a client like on the spot at an appointment. I don't want to be there all day customizing. Um, I would much prefer to have something that comes like workable. Like something that like I feel like the company put effort into that matters to me. So this hairline is bomb. Like look at this. For this to be straight out the bag, this hairline is nice. Like, she is really nice. She's not too thick, but she's also not too thin to where I'm scared to pluck. Because I've gotten wigs before and I'm like, I'm scared to touch it. Like, if I pull out one more hair, she's going to look like she got edges missing. The curls are gorgeous. The hair is super soft. Um, super soft. Like, I'm running my fingers through curls straight out of the bag. So, so far... I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little impressed. We shall see how this goes. I'm going to bleach these knots really quick and then I'll show you guys what it looks like while I'm shampooing it and what it looks like after it's freshly shampooed. See you guys in a second. And I'm about to put some sweats on cause like I'm not getting bleach on my clothes, it's not happening. I'm not having it, won't do it, refuse. thousand years later Okay, so I have my hair in my braiding pattern, and it's eight braids going straight back. Before I start sticking my edges back, I like to wax my um, sideburns, and it allows me to properly glue around them. So this side I've already done, and this side I haven't done yet, and I'm about to. So I make my own wax at home. Uh, if you guys want to know like how I make it I'm like a tutorial on it I can do one but basically it's just sugar and lemon and I'm gonna use this to get rid of this little bit here so I can have a better like more secure application so I'm gonna give this a few seconds to calm down and while it does that I'm gonna slick back my edges let me wash my hands so I got sticky stuff everywhere
Okay, so now that we got our ball cap on, I'm going to try the wig on to make sure that I've trimmed enough of the front of the ball cap. So you want to make sure that none of your ball cap is coming out in front of the lace and it's looking like we are in the clear. So I'm going to slide it back and powder the hairline to make the, um, the ball cap blend in with my skin tone. I typically use a powder that's a little bit lighter than this, but I, I've been out the country for a little while, so I have a little bit of a tan, and I want to make sure like that the scalp looks nice. Now, I like to go a bit further back just because I want my part to blend in as well, but it's okay if your scalp towards the back is a bit lighter than your complexion because typically your scalp is lighter than your complexion. It's very crucial around the edges though because that's where you want it to blend in the best. So we are ready to get started laying the wig down and this is like the most important part. <laughs> so to begin with, I'm sure you guys know if you don't, this is very important. You want to wipe down your hairline with alcohol to get rid of any of like the oils from your skin because that'll make your glue lift. If you're like me and once you have your wig on, you want it to stay on, this is like your best friend. And make sure to get around your sideburns too because that's typically the first part to lift. And you also want to get any excess powder off of your skin from where you added the powder to your, your lace. Sometimes you'll get it like around your hairline and you want to make sure that's not there because it'll interfere with how the glue adheres. And today I'm going to be using the Bold Hole wig glue which i'm obsessed with to be honest it's really really good i'm just gonna slide the wig up so i can map out where i want it to lay and i'm thinking like here would be perfect but first i'm gonna get this little paper towel and like soak it in alcohol to clean the tips of my fingers i know i keep saying this but it's very 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 important especially because i'm using glue if you were using tape or something of that nature and you don't have to touch it as much, it would be fine. But with glue, you have to kind of manipulate it a bit. And if you have oils on your fingers, I'm telling you, she is not going to last. And for all of this work, you want it to last. Trust me, my clients, like, they can keep their wigs on for up to two weeks. And they can get them wet. They can take a shower. Whatever you want to do. Um, and if you want that same capability, you have to take your time with it. What I'm going to use to apply the glue is these little bitty wooden sticks. And you can get them at your local beauty supply store. Um, and then I also, you know how you have those rat tail combs with the little metal end on it? I just take the metal end out so I kind of have more control. Um, and I also use this to apply the glue. And I use them interchangeably just depending on how large the section that I'm working on is. So... I like to slide the wig back just a bit, but to where I can like easily pull it up if I need to. And I've already pressed the hairline going straight back, so it's no like flyaways and stuff in my way, because I don't think I'm gonna do very much baby hair with this install. You don't have to, but I like to start right in the middle. False alarm. And you want to spread it out until a very, 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 very thin layer. And I like to kind of press, I like to start it behind the ball cap and press it down in front of it. And that also helps to kind of blend in the cap with your scalp, as well as creating a bit of a thicker band of glue so you have more um, holes. So I apply it right to the edge and press it down in front of the cap. So I'm going to take my blow dryer on um, high but a cool setting and just run over this to make sure it's completely clear. Okay, 
fire if like my lighting gets changed a lot it's raining outside and i'm using partial natural light partial not natural light and it's a lot going on i like to start in the middle just so i can get a more symmetrical install and if i'm looking to the side too much forgive me i have a mirror in front of me so i can see um but yeah so i like to start in the middle first i make sure it's pretty like lined up which it is So I just start from the middle and then press it in around the sides. And you want to really massage your wig in so it can kind of like seep. But now that she's down, I'm going to take the clips out. I just like to keep those in so I don't get like baby hairs like in my way because sometimes I don't want like a lot of baby hairs I feel like that's how you can really tell that your wig is a wig if you like have ridiculous baby hairs everywhere so I'm just gonna tie her down and I hate having stuff over my ears it drives me insane but that's like the best way to do it because you make sure that the sideburns stay down too and as I said that's my problem area so in order to get those super together I tie it down like over my ears. I'm gonna give it about 10 minutes to like completely dry and settle in before I do anything else. And I will be right back. But just a few things on the wig that I like. Like um, I'm really feeling this wig. It happens to be a 13 by six frontal instead of a 13 by four. So I have a lot more parting space. Like I can part my hair all the way back to like literally right here. So, no, it's right here. So the first track is like right here. So if I wanted to do like a super long middle part, like going back, I have all of those capabilities. Or if I wanted to do like a bang coming from like the crown of my head, like I like the, the construction of this wig a lot. And the hair is super soft. Now, originally I wanted to recreate the SZA VMAs look, but when I put it on, I have a big head, so it swallows up blend honey. This wig is only 12 inches and I think for that look I would have to have at least 16. So I'm gonna try something a bit different. I'll be back in a few minutes once it all like settles in. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my scarf off. Okay. So, so far, this is what we have. Now I'm just gonna clip the hair back. So now on my little baby hair brush, I'm going to just spray it with some water to get it more like soft. Spray a bit of the freeze last spray. And I'm just gonna do some very, very light baby hairs. So for right now, I'm going to keep it here with the baby hairs. Not too much, not too little. But I want to add some more texture. So I'm going to get some hairspray. Oh, still recording. Okay. <laughs> so I went, I went and got my Moroccan oil um, dry texture spray. Um, it's like a travel size. I like to take this with me if I'm wearing a wig and I'm going on like vacation or going out of town or something. Um, but yeah, I'm going to use this to kind of create more volume because if I'm going to go short, I like short and big, darling. So I'm going to just lift the hair. What is going on? Oh, okay. I'm going to lift the hair and give it a spray underneath.
And then with my brush, I'm gonna lift hair and just back comb it to kind of create a more fluffy, like natural look. And I really like the shape of this. Typically I would cut my wigs, but this one seems to be already layered somehow. So I'm not mad at it at all. She is super cute. And this is the final look. So I am obsessed with not only the texture, but with how the lace frontal came. I barely had to pluck it. Um, and it looks really really natural the um the knots bleached like literally a dream i have no complaints with this hair i would love to work with the company again um the hair is super super soft and i can tell that this wig is going to last for a long time a long long time um i've been playing with it for like a week um so I'll let you guys know more in depth like of like a review later on if that's what you want to see. Make sure you go ahead and check them out. It's elverhairwigs.com. From my experience with this one, I would definitely order. So yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later. Bye. Oh, and make sure to subscribe. We are almost at 15K and I have loads of videos that I want to drop once we get there. Um, if you have any special requests, again, drop it down below, and I love you guys. Bye.